All right, so let's cut to the chase. You clicked on this video because either you're considering the Tesla Powerwall 3 or maybe you're already a Powerwall owner yourself. So I work directly for a Tesla Premier installer here in Arizona, and I've gotten dozens of different questions from either prospective solar clients, current solar clients, or people here on YouTube, and I'm gonna answer every single one of them. So today's mission is simple. We're gonna do a speed run where I answer 47 questions that I think you might have about Tesla's Powerwall 3. All right, it might not be a speed run, but I'll go as fast as I can. So whether you're new to the Powerwall 3 or a seasoned veteran, there will be answers to questions in here that I'm sure you you have some questions will also be things you already know but bear with me and I know I'm gonna forget something after uploading so I will pin a comment below to add anything I missed anything you all suggest anything I might need to clarify or things that just change over time. So comment your questions and suggestions below. And for those of you who are new here, my name is Zach, welcome to the channel. I enjoy talking about solar storage, electric vehicles, and if those are things you enjoy as well and you'd like to support the channel, subscribe for more. I'd really appreciate that. And if at any point you find value in this or I helped answer some of your questions, drop me a like and let me know. All right, let's get rolling. Number one, an easy one. How much energy does it store? Storage capacity is 13 and a half kilowatt hours. This is our battery's fuel tank size. Number two, what's the power output? Power output is 11 and a half kilowatts. This is our battery's horsepower, essentially how fast it can discharge energy out. Keep in mind, kilowatts and kilowatt hours are different. I made a video on the difference between the two. You can find it linked in the description. Also, this power output rating helps us understand what electrical loads can be backed up in the event of a grid outage. Number three, how many batteries do I need? This one is totally dependent on your goals, whether it to be maximized grid independence or just maximizing those time of use rates. One Powerwall 3 is suitable for most homes as a starting point, but you might find that your energy needs do require two or more batteries to sustain yourself during an outage, an evening, or an extended on-peak rate. If you are looking at a solar system in excess of 10 kilowatts, I would consider at least quoting out a second power wall. Number four, will it back up my entire home? So Tesla rates 95% of single family homes to be able to achieve this whole home backup threshold with just a single battery. So if you're wondering what loads could be backed up in the event of a grid outage, look at your main service panel and look at all the labeled breakers. Any breaker that's 60 amps or lower can be backed up. And this is generally a simple rule of thumb to determine this. So if your home has all of its loads at or under that 60 amp mark, then one power wall is sufficient for whole home backup. If not, then two or more would be required. Number five, what about my AC unit? So the power wall has a load start capability of 185 LRA locked rotor amps. Basically, this is most useful when measuring if it's capable of backing up your AC unit or AC units. Your AC unit will have a label on it that will specify its rated LRA. Number six, can one power wall back up two AC units? So in this scenario with multiple AC units, you would need to add up all of your AC units LRA at your home. If you're over that 185 mark and you want to stick to one power wall, you can consider options like a soft start or just have it installed with that second AC unit, not a part of your chosen backed up loads. Number seven, how long will it last during a power outage? This is totally dependent on your draw rate during an outage. It's important to be very energy conscious to preserve your power wall. If the grid is offline, a single unit's 13 and a half kilowatt hours could last anywhere from two to three hours with heavy use to 24 plus hours with more conservative use. Incoming solar will help power the home and recharge the battery as well. And as you can see on the screen here, at a draw rate of 3.9 kilowatts, the 13 and a half kilowatt hour capacity could sustain me for about three and a half hours. Now this is with the AC turned on. If we were in a true grid outage, I would probably turn off the AC unit and I would get my demand under that one kilowatt mark. If I was at one kilowatt, then the 13 and a half kilowatt hours would then last me for 13 and a half hours. So you just take the capacity, divide it by the draw rate, and that gives you the amount of hours the battery could sustain you. An analogy I use is if I were stranded on an island and I had a fully charged cell phone, I wouldn't waste any battery life watching YouTube videos, streaming music, or anything that demanded a lot of energy. I'd preserve this energy for critical needs only. Number eight, when an outage occurs, what happens? How will I know? So when the grid goes offline, the way you find out is you're going to get a notification that's sent to the app immediately. What happened during this time is the power wall will sense this grid outage and automatically transfer the home off grid. And within milliseconds, it's gonna restore energy into the home. It's so instantaneous that you're not gonna notice it. Maybe a light will flicker, but your Wi-Fi will stay online, clocks won't need reset, none of that. It's really seamless. Number nine, am I able to monitor my system performance day to day? So all data can be found in the Tesla Energy app, which is an amazing app. There are several cool third-party apps that can add even more customization and have a little bit more granular data like Net Zero. If you already have a Powerwall system, you should check out their app. But 
But unfortunately with Tesla, there is no panel by panel monitoring on your solar array like you might find with Enphase or SolarEdge. In my two year update of my Powerwall system, I did find that the monitoring was over 99% accurate when I compared my data within the app to my utility readings. Number 10, we don't ever get power outages. Do we even need a battery? To me, the backup feature is really a cherry on top. The real perk of a storage system like the Powerwall is the ability for the battery to store your solar energy for later, either during nighttime or on peak. Obviously your utility provider's rates will determine if this even makes financial sense. If you do have one-to-one -one net metering, a battery will only be helpful to you for grid outages. Number 11, how many panels can I install with a single Powerwall 3? With this size inverter, 11 and a half kilowatts, Tesla allows up to 20 kilowatts DC of solar power on a single unit. For reference, with a 400 watt solar panel, you could technically support up to 50 panels. Number 12, what inverter does it use? So the Powerwall has an integrated hybrid inverter inside the housing of the entire assembly. Hybrid meaning it serves as both the inverter for the solar panels, but also the inverter for the battery. Now, as I stated, the inverter is rated for 11 and a half kilowatts AC, which is directly correlated to that 11 and a half kilowatt output. Number 13, does this mean it's a string inverter? Now, while the system is using a central string inverter, they do have six MPPTs or maximum power point trackers, which allows for system zoning, or that's at least what I call it. So these MPPTs, they they help reduce the risk of one shaded panel causing performance issue. So two to 12 panels can be used on a single MPPT. And these are designed for panels that are either in shaded areas or panels that are on their own roof section that might be facing a different direction. Number 14, how long does it take to charge the battery? The Powerwall has a charge rate of five kilowatts. So for it to fully charge, it's 13 and a half kilowatt hour capacity. It would have to charge at that five kilowatts for two hours and 42 minutes. Number 15, should I add more solar panels to help charge the power wall during the day. Again, this is going to be somewhat dependent on your variables, but if you're comparing a solar only proposal to a solar and battery proposal, I would consider adding another two to four kilowatts of solar output on the battery proposal to help feed these batteries during the day, especially if your solar offset is below your annual energy needs. You don't want to starve your batteries. And with the Powerwall 3 being a DC coupled battery, it means it's more efficient on its conversions, has better round trip efficiency, but it also allows for charging the battery simultaneous to powering the home. So it can charge the battery and discharge at the exact same time. This concept is why Tesla allows up to 20 kilowatts of solar on a single battery. You could charge the battery at five kilowatts, power the home at 11 and a half kilowatts at the same time, allowing for a max of 16 and a half kilowatts to be used under perfect ideal conditions. Number 16, will it work with my existing solar system? Yes, as long as you don't have another battery. While it being natively a DC coupled system, it can also be AC coupled like the Powerwall 2 was, meaning it can be used with any other manufacturer's inverter system. This is especially helpful for those of you who have an existing solar energy system. Additionally, your Tesla app will still relay all of your solar info and power info as normal. Number 17, are there any other restrictions when adding it to an existing solar system? So when it's AC coupled, a single power Powerwall is able to handle a max of 7.6 kilowatts of solar on the AC system rating. Again, this is not based on number of panels, but rather the size of your inverter system. So an easy way to figure this out is either look at your solar breaker inside your main service panel or look at your inverter's rating. If your inverter is sized at or under that 7.6 kilowatt rating, you're fine with one power wall. If you have micro inverters, this is gonna be a little bit harder to determine. So for either case, you can look at your solar back feed breaker. And if it's at or under that 40 amp mark, then you should be fine with one power wall. If you're above either of these figures, then plan on two power walls being required at a bare minimum. Number 18, I like micro inverters. Could I install a new power wall system with micro inverters? Yes, you could. I don't recommend it mainly due to that 7.6 system cap on a single unit, as well as other features that you're going to lose in an AC coupled battery system. When you do compare it to a DC coupled battery system, personally, I'd stay in one ecosystem for your battery and your inverter type. Number 19, how do you install the system? So when it's DC coupled using Tesla's integrated inverter, you do have the option to install install the system with Tesla's backup switch rather the gateway. The catch is you need to be in a utility that's approved the backup switch and you have to be installing the system as whole home backup. Additionally, you cannot be installing it with a non Tesla inverter at the time of this video. And as you can see on the screen here, the backup switch is essentially a collar that goes between your meter and your meter socket that acts as a transfer switch to disconnect your home from the grid when a power outage is detected. If it's allowed, it's an easier way to install the system. Number 20, what if I don't meet 
meet these three criteria? How do I get it installed? If your utility is not backup switch approved, you're doing partial home backup, or you're doing an AC coupled system design with a third party inverter, you will have to install the system in the traditional way with the gateway and a dedicated backed up loads panel. If you're looking at the Powerwall 3 as a retrofit add-on and you can do whole home backup and your utility is backup switch approved, it might be worth considering having your entire system restrung with Tesla system and then having that Powerwall 3 replace your current inverter system. But that really does depend on your situation. Number 21, I heard the Gateway 2 is gone. Can the Gateway 3 be AC coupled? Yes, the Gateway 3 now can be used in an AC coupled design, but a remote meter would need to be added for the solar monitoring. Number 22, how much does it cost to have it installed? It is a broad range, unfortunately, but expect the installed cost to range from the sub $10,000 mark all the way upwards to $17,000 or more, really depending on a lot of variables on the scope of the project. Also know that battery add-ons are gonna be more expensive than new installations with solar. Number 23, my car's battery is so much bigger. Can I just use my Tesla vehicle's battery to replace the need for a power wall? So this one is an extremely popular question that gets misunderstood. So Tesla has a feature called PowerShare, which this is their version of bi-directional vehicle to home charging. As of this time, it's pretty limited and can only be used with the Cybertruck. What's important to know is without a power wall system to enable this feature alone, hardware does need to be installed such as a gateway. However, an installation with existing Powerwall equipment will also be compatible with this PowerShare feature. Tesla has yet to release it to any of their vehicles other than the Cybertruck. So it's definitely a feature that's more on the horizon that many are excited for just like myself. At this point, it's designed for adding more storage capacity for grid outages only. It is not designed to replace or add more storage capacity for daily use. So it will not help reduce your utility consumption like a Powerwall is designed to do. I see it as a very nice complement to the Powerwall ecosystem, but not as a Powerwall replacement. Regardless, as of this moment, it's half-baked. Number 24, does it work with my other Powerwall system? As of this moment, no. So if you have an existing Powerwall, Powerwall 2, Powerwall Plus, the Powerwall 3 will not integrate with these batteries, but that is expected to change soon with a software update. Depending on when you're watching this video, check the pinned comment below to see if that's changed. Number 25, will it work with other third-party battery systems? No, it will not work directly with any other battery solution, but they can be installed separately of each other with a manual transfer switch, but I really don't recommend it if we can avoid it. Number 26, can it be powered directly by a generator? No, it cannot. There is no direct generator integration. Similar to the last question, it can be installed separately of a generator though. They just won't work together. Number 27, if I'm getting a system now, can I add more panels or power walls later? Of course, you could add both more panels or more power wall units. The power wall is capable of supporting that 20 kilowatts of solar input. So you have the inverter capacity to scale with more solar on even just one power wall if it's needed. Number 28, I've heard of these DC expansion packs. What are these? So the DC expansion packs are storage only units that can expand the power walls capacity in 13 and a half kilowatts hour increments. However, it does not have any power components. It's just capacity. So it does make for a more cost effective installation because it has less electrical components and less wiring that's needed. It's really ideal for homes that can achieve this whole home backup threshold with just one power wall and don't need more power, but would like additional storage capacity. DC packs are available for ordering from premier installers like us as of now, and they will be delivered at the end of November, 2024. Number 29, how many power walls can I install? You can have up to four powered units, so 46 kilowatts of power and 54 kilowatt hours of storage, then you can stack up to three additional DC packs on each powered unit. So in total, up to 16 units, 46 kilowatts of power, and now 216 kilowatt hours of storage. Number 30, how big is a power wall? They're super compact at three and a half foot tall, two foot wide and eight inches deep. They also weigh 287 pounds. Number 31, can it be installed outside? Yes, but I prefer a garage installation. If it's installed on the exterior, I would recommend a north facing wall or a shaded area of the home for longevity and performance. It can handle rainfall, snow, and flooding up to two foot. It does have an operating temperature range of minus four degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is durable, but it is still an electronic. Also the battery can be installed on the floor or it can be wall mounted. Number 32, are these batteries flammable? I suppose all batteries can be flammable to some degree. The Powerwall 3's chemistry is lithium iron phosphate or LFP. Now I am in no way a battery 
battery chemistry expert. And this is a really hot topic. I'm sure some of you guys in the comments are way smarter on this topic than myself. LFP is regarded as a much safer battery chemistry when it comes to that thermal runaway, which is what creates this fire risk. Plus there's other safety measures within the battery to make this a safe option for your home. Number 33, how long do you realistically expect the power wall to last? So with this LFP chemistry, my research shows in excess of 15 years is a realistic life expectancy. And this is based on a normal amount of battery cycles. And this is mainly due to the durability of this LFP LFP chemistry when it comes to charging and discharging. Number 34, how long is the warranty? It comes with a 10 year warranty with unlimited cycles and a 70% energy retention at year 10. Number 35, what happens if the inverter fails? Can it be replaced separately? Nope, the entire assembly would need to be replaced. The inverter is laser welded in the enclosure. You'd have to contact your installer for them to perform a full swap out. Tesla is really good with returns or RMAs in my experience. The labor is covered as well for the full 10 years, which is really cool. Number 36, where is the Tesla? Tesla Powerwall manufactured. They are manufactured in Tesla's Gigafactory out in Sparks, Nevada. Interesting to note too, the Gigafactory can build over 700,000 Powerwalls per year. Number 37, can my Powerwall power my home during peak times to maximize savings? Absolutely. Tesla has a setting within their app where you can set the operational mode and then select which hours are on peak. It will take all of this information, learn your energy habits, and then charge and discharge accordingly. Number 38, can I sell energy back to my utility for credit? Yes, depending on your utility and their rate structure. You can discharge the battery to the grid during times of day or times of year where they pay more for your energy. If your utility allows VPP or virtual power plant, then you can enroll in that directly on the app to further take advantage of these features. Number 39, can I charge my EV at night directly from my power wall? Of course you can, but you have to understand that the power wall is just a fraction of the capacity of your EV. So in most cases, your power wall would be fully discharged within an hour of charging and and only provide about 15% state of charge to your vehicle. The energy would be better used during on-peak or general home use as it will provide energy during a longer period of time. Charging direct from solar or from the utility is usually recommended. 40, if I have a partial home backup and I'm on grid, will my power walls provide energy to all of my home's electrical loads? Yes, even with partial home backup, your power wall will still provide energy to all of the loads in your home. Only in a grid down scenario will you see that partial element come into play where only your backed up loads will be energized. So the 99% of the time when you're on grid, whether you have partial or whole home backup, your experience is identical. Number 41, I just want to get rid of my utility company. Can it be installed off grid? So it's not designed for off grid applications. It's a grid tied solution. There are better DIY type options for off grid scenarios than this product. Plus, if you're already living in a grid tied residence, going off the grid and disconnecting service entirely isn't really a thing that can be done. Number 42, what if Wi-Fi goes down? Does it support Bluetooth connection? The power wall communicates through Wi-Fi, cellular, or ethernet connections only. If the Wi-Fi and cellular go down, you will not have any communications with your Powerwall 3 system through the first party Tesla app. Your power wall will operate as normal, just no communication will be available. Number 43, do I need to install a power wall with solar panels? No, but it's generally recommended to add at least some solar to allow for recharging of the battery during the day when you're in a grid down scenario. You can install just a power wall to offer an alternative to a generator and allow for day-to-day -day rate arbitrage where essentially you charge from the utility during off-peak and then use that energy during on-peak to create a little bit of energy savings. Number 44, can I DIY my own power wall installation? Nope, Tesla is not a DIY friendly product. They will only allow a certified installer to install and commission the system. Number 45, can it be used for commercial use or only residential? It's only a able to be used for residential use at this time, but that is likely to change in the near future for those of you with small commercial properties. Number 46, I don't like Elon Musk or Tesla. What options should I consider? I'd ask a few of your local installers what options they'd recommend outside of Tesla for your specific needs. If you're looking to go DIY, then that's going to be a different conversation entirely. And honestly, I wouldn't be of much assistance there. We made it. Number 47, on the Tesla app, what backup reserve should I select? I recommend 20% as a starting point, just like Tesla. However, you can go higher or lower depending on your goals and the number of batteries that you do have. I do get a lot of questions on the Tesla app as a whole. So if you wanna check out other critical things that you do need to know about this app, click on the video here on the screen. Again, check that pinned comment down below for anything we missed or anything that's changed. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more and we will talk next time.